Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a di differential equation. I was about to say diophantin. This is a differential equation because we have the deriv derivative of y equals a function of x. Y is a function of x, so tangent y is also a function of x. Makes sense? Now, if you had y prime is equal to tangent x, that would be kind of fairly easy to solve because you could then think about, okay, the derivative of which function is tangent x, even though it's not very straightforward, that would be slightly easier. But we're going to follow somewhat the same path. Okay, it's just going to be a little reversed. So let's go ahead and replace y prime with dy over dx. I know some of you guys are like, oh, this is way too easy. Okay, we sometimes got to do easy problems, right? And if you have any hard problems on, especially on differential equations, please let me know. You can comment and share them with me. There's a link as well. So this is a separable equation, which means I can put all the y's on one side, the y's people, and x is on the other side. And then integrate both sides. Isn't that awesome? When you separate the variables, you can just integrate. And we're only going to use a constant on one side. But how do you integrate 1 over tangent y, right? You see, that's what I meant by reverse. If you had tangent x, you would integrate tangent x. Now we're going to have to integrate its reciprocal. Make sense? Okay, cool. So to integrate this, first of all, write sine as, I mean, tangent as sine over cosine. And then you're going to flip it so it's going to look like this. Cosine y over sine y and maybe put the dy here as well. So that's going to be our cotangent equals dx. You know the right hand side, but we'll write it at the end. Now, how do you integrate something like this? U substitution. So let's invoke the power of u. We're going to do a u sub. Now in u subs, it's important to identify u. It's usually the u is something that can be differentiated. And when we differentiate it, we should be able to see its derivative. So kind of like the a function and its derivative showing up together in an integral, or should I say integrand, whatever. Such a weird word. But in this case, it happens to be sine. You might be saying like, okay, if I pick cosine as my u, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so couldn't you adjust with the minus sign? No, because not only you have to get the derivative, you have to get the du. So we have to have a u and a du together. Make sense? So sine y equals u. And if you do a lot of problems on u sub, you'll get better and better at it, okay? So let's see, maybe we can do a video, and I keep saying this like video, so many video ideas, maybe a bunch of problems with u subs, right? How, what do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you like, really like it, we'll do it. So if u is equal to sine y, then du is just gonna be the derivative of uh, this, sine y, which is cosine y, dy. Now you might be saying, like, aren't you supposed to multiply by y prime? Yes, this is kind of y prime. If you divide both sides by dx, you'll get u prime and y prime. Make sense? Okay, cool. So that's du, and notice that I have the du and u together. Beautifully interwoven, and that is du over u. That's just amazing, right? And we know the integral. Don't we know how to integrate 1 over x? It's ln x. 1 over u, ln u. Easy, right? You just change the dummy variable or the dumb variable, whatever. This is ln u, and I'm going to avoid absolute value, if you'll forgive me, because I don't like writing it, but you can definitely be more specific. And on the right-hand side, like I said earlier, I'm going to use the constant. So this is the answer, right? Nope. We have to back substitute. What is u? Sine. What is u? What are you? Who are you? Okay. We're going to replace u with sine y, and we can leave it at this point. And by the way, no initial condition was given because I don't like initial condition problems. They are too realistic or too applicable. I don't know. I don't like applied math, by the way. Sorry for my ranting about different branches, but I like the abstract math better. And algebra, of course. Probably no. Anyway, so we can leave it at that, but I want to isolate y if possible. Can we do it? Yes. No, don't worry. We don't need Lambert's W function. I know some folks don't like it. I wasn't liking it, but then I started liking it because it's kind of fun. Anyways, we can do e to the power of both sides. That's going to give us this, which can be written as e to the x times e to the c. But e to the c is constant. Do you see why it's a constant? I hope you do. And that is going to be e to the power ln something is just that thing. So this is going to be sine y. Sorry, I switched sides because I wanted to write it on the left-hand side. I don't know why. 
uh, actually I could probably switch around anyways I'm gonna switch around one more time I, I hope you don't mind because it's better that way so sine y is gonna equal k e to the x and then we're gonna do our magic touch which is the inverse sine or the arc sine you know some people write it as sine to the power of negative one and it doesn't mean reciprocal but let's use the arc sine oops not just arc arc sine so we're gonna do arc sine of sine y and arc sine of this and arc sine of sine y is y is it always y is sine of arc sine y is always y. a lot of questions to answer about the domain and the range but in this case we're just going to assume hey this is equal to y and y is equal to arc sine k e to the x and this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe, take care, and bye-bye. I don't know if I have a result from, from Alpha. Looks like I don't, so have a good one. Bye-bye.